Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome back to The Hive. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Home Energy Management Dashboard in Home Assistant 2021.8 release. I'll go through setting it up with my solar inverter data and my Rainforest Eagle data, and we'll also add some individual appliances with smart switches to it as well so that we can monitor those. We're also going to talk about some of the implications that this has for your smart home. So while I roll the intro, take a moment to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos each week. And let's get started. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I'm interested in the energy saving aspect of smart homes and how we can leverage them to help reduce our carbon footprint, not to mention our energy bills. The first step in being able to do that is to get a better understanding of our energy usage. So having a nice way to visualize that data of when and where energy is being used is, in my opinion, the first and most important part of making an impact. In a previous video, I demonstrated setting up a Grafana dashboard using data from Home Assistant with InfluxDB sitting in the middle. The August 2021 release of Home Assistant has made visualizing your energy consumption and production for that matter, a lot simpler and built the dashboard right into Home Assistant. So if you haven't already, to get working on this, you're going to need to update to at least the 2021.8.0 release of Home Assistant. Now, if you're running a supervised instance of Home Assistant, you can do that by just going to the supervisor and clicking update on any pending updates. As you can see, uh, we have 2021.8.3 uh, and 2021.8.6 is available. You need to be on at least 2021.8.0 to get the energy feature. I'm going to click update to make sure that I'm on the latest version. So while we're waiting for that to update, uh, we will come back in just a couple of minutes uh, once Home Assistant has come back up. Okay, great. So now that Home Assistant has started back up and that took around about 10 minutes to complete that update, we're going to set up our energy dashboard. And you'll see that on the left hand side here, we have this energy icon here. And if we click on that, uh, we are walked through how to set up this energy page. So the first step is to configure the amount of energy we consume from the grid and if we produce energy, how much we give back to the grid. So we're going to click on add consumption and I'm going to click on the drop down here and I'm going to find in my Eagle 200. Now I've discovered in my production instance that this seems to be inverted from how I would expect it to be. So uh, the grid consumption is energy delivered, not energy received. Uh, and I think that might be because it's from the perspective of the grid. We can also use an entity to track costs uh, with current prices and that kind of thing. I don't have that set up at the moment. I might take a look at that in another video. I'm going to click save on that. So we've got our delivered and I'm going to add our return to grid. So click add return. I'm going to use a static rate of 0.1. Not sure that I can change that unit. Okay. I will leave that as is because the minimum here in Victoria is 10 cents uh, per kilowatt hour. For the entity, I'm going to use the energy received. And you'll note that we're, when we hit save, we're using the total uh, because it's using the statistical analysis. This is uh, fairly new to the 2021.8. Uh, it stores statistics over a period and it can look at that based on the daily and weekly, etc. numbers. We've also got the CO2 signal integration. And if we uh, click on that, uh, we can set up our CO2 signal. And if, if you haven't already got an access token, you can go to their website and sign up using your email. Uh, and once you confirm your email, they will email you an individual API token. I'm going to paste my API token in here and click submit. And I'm going to set my CO2 signal up in 
the office and I'm going to hit finish and I'm going to click next. So now we want to let Home Assistant monitor the solar panels to give insight on the performance. So I'm going to add solar production. I'm going to click this drop down and I'm going to select my energy total Fronius inverter. So again, we're looking at the total production in this case. We can also add production forecasting. So if I click on forecast production, we can add forecast and we can now insert the details for this forecast.solar integration. If it's unclear, we can refer to the documentation. I'm going to leave all of the settings default except for the total watt peak power of my solar modules, which is 5,120. It's actually 5,180, my bad. And I'm going to hit submit. And this is actually setting up a separate integration in our uh, configuration integrations as well. Okay, so it has created that configuration. We're gonna hit finish and we will hit save. So we've got our solar production there as well. So uh, now we will click next and we can also now set up energy tracking for individual devices. So I'm going to click add device and I'm gonna click my drop down here. Now it's worth noting that there is not everything available in here. Certain energy monitoring smart plugs don't actually supply the right uh, information. So um, if you don't see your entity listed, uh, we can click on that and we can learn more about the statistics function of the Home Assistant update. We'll pop back here. I'm going to add my washing machine total consumption and I'm going to add my TP-Link total consumption, TP-Link energy monitor total consumption. Hit save. That TP-Link energy monitor total consumption is now plugged into my dishwasher. I'm going to now click on show me my energy dashboard and straight away we can see that we've got our energy usage here uh, so the sun started coming up uh, somewhere around about seven ish and we can start to see the yellow is the solar that we've consumed we then pretty much started covering anything above the zero is what we have um what we've consumed and anything below the zero is what we've fed back into the grid. Uh, and if we hover over that, um, we'll see the total consumed and the uh, total returned. We've also got this nice energy distribution graphic over here, which shows us how much we've used from our solar, which is the orange component, and how much we've used from the grid, which is the blue component there. Uh, we've got the net returned to the grid, uh, which is 2.5 kilowatt hours so far today. Uh, we've only self-consumed about 38.7% of our energy. Uh, and the CO2 signal integration doesn't appear to have worked because that also tells us roughly where our energy consumption has come from. And I can show you that on my production instance if we go to so over on my production instance, we have the CO2 signal integration working fine. Uh, and it shows us that 1.2 kilowatt hours have come from non-fossil sources. Uh, and that's the green section there. And we can also see the non-fossil energy consumed is 60.58% there. So that includes our solar now we would also uh, expect to see our solar production data in here uh, for whatever reason doesn't always show up and it can take up to two hours for new data to arrive after we've configured the energy dashboard. Uh, I haven't figured out why that doesn't always show up on my system. I think it might not be storing the statistic properly in the database so I'll have to take a closer look at that. In our sources we can see the different colors of things so if I look at the colors here the Yellow is consumed solar, the purple is the energy re returned back to the grid, so purple. Uh, the blue is the energy that we have consumed, uh, and we've also got the solar total there as well. Uh, and the grid total, uh, we can kind of see uh, a rough calculation of our grid costs. Uh, for whatever reason that's still in euros, I might need to take a closer look at that shortly and then we've got our individual devices down here now i haven't run either the dishwasher or the washing machine today uh, they are just sitting there at idle so they've consumed very very little energy today 
Now, if you don't have the Eagle 200 energy monitor, there are some alternatives. If we take a look at the blog post about energy management in the Home Assistant, uh, it does mention the Slim Laser for a P1 port, if you have a P1 port on your smart meter, or Home Assistant Glow, uh, which monitors the activity LEDs on your smart meter. So the Slim Laser is 27 euros and 50, um, and it has a little RJ11 plug uh, that plugs into the side of your smart meter. If you have that port on your smart meter, there it is there, the P1 port. Uh, but most of, the, most of the Australian smart meters don't have that. The other option is to read the activity LEDs. Now, most smart meters that do have activity LEDs don't actually output the exports to the grid using that. The CO2 signal integration that we mentioned before shows us our non-fossil consumption and that uh, is an API that is basically looking at this electricity map uh, that we've got. So um, as you can see here in Australia our electricity grid is fairly dirty based on the carbon intensity graph down in the bottom right. Uh, even here in Victoria we're still you know, only 34% low carbon, 34% uh, renewable. And that's got a lot to do with us relying very heavily on coal-fired power plants. Uh, there are some new renewable projects such as uh, some large wind farms and the 300 megawatt hour big battery uh, that is being built in Geelong. Now I did mention that um, the data source is not listed for all of my energy monitoring smart plugs and that's because the Xiaomi smart plugs that all have energy monitoring here in my home, uh, their integration doesn't yet support this statistical storage of data. So the other thing with this uh, non-fossil energy consumed, I actually pay more money to my electricity retailer for uh, renewable energy. Uh, however, all that is, is they take that money to buy renewable energy credits to offset the carbon. So there we have setting up the home energy management dashboard in Home Assistant. As I mentioned, having access to your data is the first and possibly most important step in making a difference to your energy consumption and CO2 impact. Now that we've got this dashboard set up, we can make some more informed decisions about how and when we use energy in our home and then start to use Home Assistant to automate the way we use that energy at different times of the day. That is all we have for this video and I do hope that it helped you in your home automation journey. Be sure to comment down below with a home automation idea you'd like to see me cover in a future video and what your favorite part of this new feature is. Don't forget to follow Hivemind Automation on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and links to those will be in the video description. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing now. While you're at it, hit the bell icon to get a notification when I release new videos each week. And lastly, if you like what I'm doing here and you want to help to support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. Contributions through that buy me a coffee link are put towards making more and better content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.